Hey everybody, I'm getting very close to finishing all eight paintings in my lexicon series, so thanks for tuning in. So in these final videos, and that's where we are right now, we're in the final videos of this entire series, I'll be talking about how I know when a painting is finished and what I look for. Uh, I'll be talking out loud as I analyze these paintings. And this is the part that is uh, really coming down to refining. And I think it's the things that you do in these final stages that really personify what your personal voice is. So it's really important that you kind of take your time and the moves are usually very small. And so, I'm always amazed that people are interested in in watching me uh, do these very small things. But when I've critiqued other students' paintings in the clarify stage, they're always amazed at how just a small little tweak can make a huge difference in their painting and how it can be the difference between I like it and I love it. So that's what I look for in my own work. I might be going from, okay, things are going pretty well, but I know that with a few little tweaks, I can go from like to love. And so that's the whole point. And that is what I teach in all of my fundamental courses like Powerful Design, Personal Color, as well as my Art Success Masters. Both of these courses have worksheets and exercises to help refine your sensitivity to your own personal voice so that your work really does typify who you are. And uh, it's fun for me to be in Clarify and I hope you enjoy these videos. So please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That just lets me know that you want more videos. I will create more videos for you and we'll have more contests in the future of free giveaways. So here is Clarify in my final paintings in the Lexicon series. Thanks very much. Okay, so hey everyone. I'm getting started here today. And what I'm trying to do is finish all eight paintings. And they're all, you know, close. Uh, I've worked on them kind of at the same time and trying, you know, if there was a, a weaker one, I'd work on that one to get it up to the level of the other. So it's kind of like a family. And uh, I got my wet palette here and I'm going to squirt out some paint right now and just try and finish all these guys so that I can get them ready for a show that I have coming up. And uh, my original goal was to get these done by July 10th. So I think I'm on schedule. And that was kind of lucky. <laughs> Because, you know, when you set a goal, you don't know if it's going to happen. And, and, of course, you can always change it, but it's good to have a date in mind. And today's the, I think it's the 8th. So I'm going to start off with this one. Uh, what I did last night uh, was I just put a coat of uh, gloss medium on it and I'm add some colors here. I don't expect that the things I'll be doing at this point will be too dramatic, which, you know, that's usually uh, what happens for me in Clarify is I, I, you know, the bones are there, the structure is there. And I have converted these to black and white, or at least, you know, I think I don't always do that because my eye can pretty much tell what a midtone is. I can tell where the lights are. I can tell where the darks are. I can, I ask myself, you know, where's my eye moving? Is it moving through the painting? And, um, so these paintings definitely have a lot of cohesion uh, throughout because I've used similar shapes, some collage paper, one medium, they're all the same size. Um, and that was a choice. Again, these are choices you make. And the, the choices you make have, you know, ramifications. So if you want more cohesion, then you just want to give yourself some limitations like Limit your palette, limit your size, limit your medium. And if you're not as concerned with cohesion, then and there's nobody saying you have to be. You know, cohesion is a choice. <laughs> but the main thing is that you're excited by what you're doing. That's probably the most important thing that will help you make your choice of what you're going to do. So I'm going to move these um, paintings here. I just I have a rack over here where I can kind of store them upright grab them when I need them. And, you know, I will do that occasionally and clarify, like, how is this one relating to this one? And right now they're all relating pretty well to each other, but as I make these final choices here. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good, I guess. All right. So, again, I'm not going to do anything crazy wild here. And, and, you know, I almost didn't want to record this video because I, you know, because the changes are so small, I feel that it's maybe kind of boring. But 
All right. Um, the first thing is I wanted to make this two, this number two, which is sitting a little bit off center. And I like the shape. I like where it's at. And I, I want to darken part of it, but not all of it. Again, I'm working, thinking about value then and the role it's playing in this painting, which in this particular painting, um, I'm, so I'm going to mix up a dark, but I'm going to, it's not just black. I'm going to add some purple to it and some red. So it's dark, but that doesn't mean it, it has to be black. It can be a mixture of colors. I'm just going to enhance like a little portion of this. So there's going to be a little bit of a color change, which you're definitely not able to see um, because the value is so dark. Camera's not going to pick this up, but when you're close, you will notice it. And again, these are the, the microscopic changes you can make to a painting that um, give your painting a little bit more interest. Again, not just black, part of it's black, but then it goes to purple or a deep, deep purple. And that, you know, when you're up close, that can look really nice. I need my slot board. All right, so now that pops a little bit more. I've been wondering about this area. It's, here's the positive shape, which is the number five. And then the negative shape is the red. And I feel like it's a little bit too crazy there. So, I think it's calling for a little bit of quieting down. So I want it to be, I want some color. So I'm thinking, I guess I'm thinking a glaze here. And I think, I think when I sanded back that this A got a little bit because the paint was, you know, whatever thickness it was, it um, wasn't as thick as maybe I thought it was. So I'm gonna mix up a color here that's close to what I had just kind of this army green, add a bit of white to it and kind of just restate the solidity of that letter. This might be a little bit too bright. So um, adding a little bit of this original color. And that's, see how close I am here. Yeah, that's nice. And it'll go a little darker as it dries. But again, just restating, because when you, when you sand, which is what I did, um, if the paint's kind of thin to begin with, then you reveal a lot of craziness below that original slot board, which is what I did. I don't have to restate the whole thing. I can be selective so that maybe I want a little bit of that underpainting that was revealed when I sanded to show, but not as much. And I'm making the color more solid. Here's the part where it got really crazy. So I definitely want to knock a bit of that up. Just by quieting that down a bit helps. I'm going to grab this tool here. So what I feel like I needed for this one, because this was one of the last ones I did and it needed the most help. It was, you know, struggling. Um, one of the problem paintings. Most came together pretty quickly, but... Um, I just felt like this one, because it had this crazy pink underneath it, was a little bit more challenging. And so I saved it for last. Just want to grab a bit of color here. What I'm painting right now is a piece of um, collage paper. And then I want to ask myself, do I want to like knock out more of this? Because it is a little bit too much. So I do a color change. Um, maybe I'd make it a little bit, let's add a little bit of white here. You can really go any direction in terms of color. A little bit of red. I just want it to be a little bit of purple. Again, harmonizing by adding a little bit of everything that's in this painting, not everything, but just enough colors to make it feel integrated, then that, that just helps. And I don't want there to be a huge value change, so I need to lighten this up because it's too dark. And the final adjustments of value can happen. 
later, but I, for now, I, I'm looking for a value that's going to be close to this green. More concerned about the value than the color. Again, I'm coming up against a piece of collage paper that has quite a bit of height. And then do I need that black up here? I think I kind of do for the eye, so. So I'm kind of quieting down a lot of stuff up here, but leaving that dark. This may take multiple passes with the paint, depending on how it dries and how streaky it is and uh, checking the values, but um, having fewer things happening up here is a good thing. I'm gonna use the same color down here. <clears throat> okay, I'm feeling like this part's working okay, and then I'm liking this better, and this is the only part now that I'm not sure about. Um, I need to knock some of this busyness back, so... I'm going to take like a dirty orange, fairly transparent color, And just knock it back in terms of. So here's the orange. And I want it to be a glaze, so I'm going to take probably just this airbrush medium. And a little bit of black, which is. I want to see how that looks over there. See, I can go over the red as well. And That's... So now it's just a matter, like the values are working. Little tweaks in color um, or something I could consider here. Um, this is just like that, but then <clears throat> if I sand this just a little bit, I haven't sanded this yet. So. And I don't want to sand too much, but just a few key areas here, a little bit here. I don't want to bring in too much texture at this point and really trying to keep that most of it off to so return quickly because you know everything is 
trying to dry right away. And then after you get the initial glaze off, you can always come back and, you know, maybe lift a little bit more. Or... Okay, so that's pretty good, I think. Like in this case, I might add just a bit of water to this paper towel and lift a little bit more from this guy. I don't want it to get too dark. So you're kind of selectively choosing where you how dark you want it to go and i mean if you don't do what i'm doing now by lifting then you just have to go back in with paint to lift values and stuff like that but i want certain areas to be a little bit more bright and so i'm just selectively lifting some of that glaze there okay that one i think is done so i'm going to set this one aside <laughs> I'm down now some of these were close to being done like this one um, but I was wondering I wanted to actually this one I was thinking that this upper quadrant here is not quite working as well it needs to be set back a little bit but how and just too much bright up there and as well here so I did put gloss medium over this and so I just need to probably dirty this up a bit, which tells me that it needs a bit of this and some airbrush medium. I'll go over the whole thing and focus on the upper left hand quadrant. I'll add a little bit of black, I'm not sure. 